Welcome to Chef Lizzie's Online Culinary Lessons. On this episode, we will be discussing HACCP and its role in COVID-19 prevention. Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point, or HACCP. First, we need to define what HACCP is and its importance. At the end of this lesson, we'll be able to identify what operational changes there are that could require companies and consumers alike to re-evaluate or put in place if they haven't done so their food safety plans using the HAZAP system. HAZAP is a science-based approach to food system that identifies hazards and measures for control to ensure the safety of food. HAZAP is a tool to assess hazards and establish control system that focuses on prevention rather than relying mainly on end product testing. HAZAP requires a multidisciplinary approach compatible with the implementation of quality management systems such as the ISO 9000 series. HAZAP is a system used at all stages of food production and preparation processes including packaging, distribution, proper food handling procedures, monitoring techniques, and record keeping that ensures the consistency safety of food. These are the major food hazards, chemical residues, microbiological contaminants, physical hazards, ergonomic hazards. Chemical residues. Chemical hazards can occur at any point during harvesting, storage, preparation, and service of food. When toxic chemicals used come into contact with food, the food may be contaminated by those chemicals. Examples, pesticides and antibiotics. Microbiological contaminants. Microbiological hazard occurs when food becomes contaminated by microorganisms found in the air, food, water, soil, animals, and the human body. Many microorganisms are helpful and necessary for life itself. However, given the right conditions, some microorganisms may cause a foodborne illness. Microorganisms commonly associated with foodborne illnesses include bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Physical hazards Physical hazards usually result from accidental contamination and or poor food handling practices. Examples include slivers of glass, human hair, nails, false nails, nail polish, pieces of jewelry, metal fragments from worn or chipped utensils and containers, dirt, stones, and frilled toothpicks. Ergonomic hazards. Ergonomic risk factors are workplace situations that cause wear and tear on the body and can cause injury. These include repetition, awkward posture, forceful motion, stationary position, direct pressure, vibration, extreme temperature, noise, and work stress. HAZAP originated in the 1960s with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration or NASA, the Pillsbury Company, and the U.S. Army Laboratories collaborated together to provide safe food for upcoming space expeditions. These groups came together to solve two critical problems facing NASA's crewed space missions, crumbs and disease-producing microorganisms, or toxins. It was decided that NASA's engineering management requirements, critical control points, would be used as a guideline for this food safety initiative. Critical control points was used to test weapon and engineering system reliability, and by using CCP, NASA, and Pillsbury were able to hire contractors to identify and eliminate the critical failure areas in the food processing procedures. Thus, the first pathogen monitoring measurement requirement was imposed on food systems. In the 70s, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration adopted HACCP in low-acid canned foods in order to reduce the growing number of food poisoning cases. 
The need for global trade standards worldwide in the 80s saw the HACCP system spread in the USA and Europe. Rising number of food poisoning cases in the 1990s led the World Health Organization to advocate HACCP as a recommended way to ensure better food safety standard. The European Union introduced legislation in the 90s that made HACCP a legal requirement on all European Union countries. The seven HACCP principles are Conduct a hazard analysis, determine a critical control point, establish critical limits, establish monitoring procedures, establish corrective actions, establish verification procedures, establish record keeping and documentation procedures. Conduct a hazard analysis. Identify potential biological, chemical, and physical hazards in the food system by looking at how food is processed and determine where hazards are likely to occur for each one. Factors that contribute to outbreaks of foodborne diseases and on the applied research on ecology, multiplication, and inactivation of foodborne pathogens are identified. Initial hazard analysis is longer than inspection. Valuable information about the food process is obtained during this process. Determine the critical control points. Find points in the process where identified hazards can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. These are the CCPs. Depending on the process, there may be more than one CCP. In attempting to identify potential hazards, consider these three areas the raw materials used, the processing procedures, and the use of the product. This means that in any particular food processing operation, the hazards depend upon the source of ingredients, the processing equipment, the duration of the process, the storage of food, and the food handlers. Those points in the process where the potential hazards could occur and can be prevented and or controlled. Establish critical limits. Determine critical limits for each CCP. A critical limit's purpose is to determine if a potential physical, chemical, or biological hazard is within an acceptable value or not. If these limits are exceeded, corrective actions need to be taken to prevent or eliminate the hazard or reduce it to a safe level. Establish a system to monitor control of CCP. Determine the best way to check critical limits and regularly measure the CCP to make sure they are within the safe zone. CCPs need to be constantly monitored to make sure critical limits are consistently met and not breached. You also need to identify who will monitor the controls and how often. Establish corrective action for CCP that is not under control. If monitoring determines a CCP is not within the established limits, if problems occur, corrective actions must be in place to ensure no public health hazards occur. Corrective actions have two purposes. To check and correct any process deviations that cause loss of control. To find the cause and make sure it doesn't happen again. Establish procedures to verify effectivity of HACCP. Determine if the plan is working as intended by performing regular evaluation of the plan. For example, checking if measurement equipments are working properly, making sure corrective actions have the desired effect, and more. Verify if the plan is effective in the prevention, reduction, and elimination of identified hazards. Establish documentation on procedures and records. These steps involve determining which records you need to keep in order to know which control points gave you more trouble than others and to show that the system is working as intended. Keep records for these actions, monitoring activities, corrective actions, validating equipment, and working with suppliers. From farm to fork. We need to redesign our food systems so it can sustain resilience to crises such as COVID-19. For the most successful implementation of HACCP, it should be applied from farm to table. 
starting on the farm and ending with the person preparing the food, whether in a restaurant or at home. Most of us are often unaware of the complexity of the process that food goes through before reaching our plates. Food products go through a complex food supply chain. Farm Food production This includes growing and harvesting crops and livestock, milking and fishing. Processing Includes cutting, cleaning, packaging, storage, refrigeration, refining, purifying, extracting, milling, pasteurization, pressing, dehydrating, hydrolysis, heat treatment, and fermentation. Delivery. This procedure applies to food service employees who handle, prepare, or serve food. The movement of raw goods from their native site to the point of use in manufacturing their subsequent manipulation in production processes and the transfer of finished products from factories and their distribution to users or sales outlets. Receiving. Care must be taken when receiving food orders as pests or pathogens may be introduced to the workplace. You need to check deliveries carefully to ensure food safety. To do this, Ensure that the area where you receive food is clean, well-lit, dry, and free from pests. The person in charge must ensure that all food is received fresh and safe when it enters the food service operation and to transfer food to proper storage as quickly as possible. Train food service employees on using the procedures in this SOP. Delivery checks are a crucial part of your food safety management system. Cooking is the art, science, and craft of using heat to prepare the food for consumption. Cooking techniques and ingredients vary widely, from grilling food over an open fire, to using electric stoves, to baking in various types of ovens. We have to follow food safety rules when cooking to protect your guests from foodborne illness. Serving, how foods offered at retail and restaurants or done at home can be safely handled and delivered to the public or family members. This is a key best practices for one's health. Food safety and food hygiene are important as they ensure that the food you handle and produce is safe for consumption. Cleaning, sanitizing, and personal protective equipment at work to prevent the spread of disease such as COVID-19. The Farm to Fork strategy ensures food security, nutrition, and public health, making sure that everyone has access to sufficient, safe, nutritious food. typical challenge to maintaining effectivity of a designed HACCP system is ensuring that the system is up to date. The system must be revised when there are changes to customers, suppliers, and equipment, or if facilities create new hazards, or if any corrective action becomes invalid, or simply when there are changes to a menu. Changes in any procedure requires re-evaluation of the HACCP system as there could be an adverse effect to food safety or product shelf life. Examples of those changes that may require re-evaluation of a HACCP system and food safety plan are changes to ingredients or the supplier of ingredients, changes to the product a company makes, changes to operations that have an impact on procedures, for example this pandemic, a change in number of personnel in the facility as it could have an impact on control measures monitoring, or verification procedures. Consumers can implement HACCP-like practices in the home by following these simple yet effective steps as part of their food safety plan. Firstly is to follow proper storage, handling, cooking, and cleaning procedures. Secondly, from the time of purchasing at the grocery store to the time they cook and serve a meal, here are steps to follow to ensure safety of food by keeping raw meat and poultry separate from cooked and ready-to-eat foods, by thoroughly cooking the meat and poultry, by properly refrigerating meat and poultry, 
and by refrigerating and recooking leftover foods to prevent bacterial growth. Now that you have learned about the HACCP system, here are some tips to sum up this discussion. Make it a necessity to practice protective measures and protocols to prevent spread of COVID-19. It may be the best defense to protect ourselves and our loved ones against the disease. Those in the food industry should strictly follow the protocols of food safety management systems. Minimizing contact between people is preferable during this outbreak. Therefore, online food deliveries and takeaway orders are more desirable. You should limit your visits to the markets and stores by stocking food items according to their perishability. And most of all, make it a must to learn and practice the HACCP system.